Alrighty guys, they'll be changing out the timing chain tensioner on an M54B30. This process is pretty much the same on any M5X, pretty similar at least, uh, but I do know the part numbers are only the same for the M54, B25, B30, along with the M52TU. I believe they're all the same. I'll put the part numbers in the description below along with some links to the parts and the tools. So basically how this works is the mechanical chain tensioner has a piston, which is actually in this box, um, and the spring, along with a uh, cap on the outside, we'll reuse that that's on the car right now, which is attached via this crush washer as well. And uh, this spring will apply tension to the timing chain. Now over time, what can happen is this spring can lose its tension and it actually will be slightly compressed and it won't create as much tension as it needs to on the timing chain. And this can cause some weird timing chain slap um, sort of on startup or even just some overall rattling, which should not be occurring. Now, my car does have a strange rattle at the moment, but I do believe it is one of my catalytic converters, which is just rattling inside of the header, unfortunately. Um, I don't think this will fix the issue, but my car does have 204,000 miles and it is 21 years old. So I kind of figured I might as well change it. The only part you really need to change are this spring and this crush washer. However, I'm also changing the piston. Um, I kind of figured why not? It was pretty cheap. I think only like six bucks or so. So I kind of figured I would swap that out. Something you may want to do instead of doing just a refresh on the stock uh, chain tensioner is you can upgrade to the M3 chain tensioner, which is off the S54, S52, and S50, all from various M3s, D36 and E46. Instead of being a mechanical style like this with a spring, they're actually hydraulic. Um, the idea is they're more durable, they can apply more pressure, more um, more reliably over time. All that being said, great upgrade, although it is 80 bucks and all of this stuff was about 11, so I really didn't think it was worth it in my situation, especially because the stock system did last so long. Um, I figured I wouldn't bother doing the upgrade. Now, as for tools, you're gonna want a half inch drive ratchet like this. This is some cheap one off Amazon I'll put in the description below. I don't really have all my tools right now, so this does the next best thing. Um, also a deep 32 millimeter socket, so which you'll need to get over that cap. Now I'm gonna go to the car and we will change it out. Okay guys, here we are at the M54 engine bay. As we can see, I have an E39 over here, so there's a pretty open space on the side of the engine over here. And E46 is pretty cramped in comparison, so it'll be a little bit tough. You might have to loosen up your washer fluid bottle, which would usually sit over here on the E46. Of 39, we don't need to do that, it's because we have pretty easy access right there. So that metal cap, I put some uh, towels below it, just so we have some easier access um, without spilling much oil. But essentially our 13 millimeter socket will go over that piece, we'll loosen it. Um, keep some pressure on it though, because like I said, there's a spring in there, so it might spring back at you. Um, anticipate some oil to fall, so either put a cloth or some towels like I have down below there, and we should be good to go. Oh, there we go. All right, now it's broken loose. We can kind of take it off by hand. Okay, so back inside we have our old um, assembly. This is the cap which we'll not be replacing. Here is the piston that slides right out. And there is the spring. Now, there really wasn't much tension on this thing, which is a little bit concerning, but no matter, we'll be changing it up with a new one anyways, but let's compare the old spring to the new one. So just as expected, the new spring is a little bit longer than the old one, which just goes to show that the old one has lost some tension over time. If we squeeze both, this one squeezes relatively easily. This one is nearly impossible to squeeze. So this is definitely a necessary thing to do. Um, now, like I said, I wasn't really having any clear issues of this. Um, you may hear some people have timing chain slap and all stuff on startup, but my car really didn't have that. I think my issue, my rattle issue was definitely related to the cats and my headers. I've put the new one together now with the new spring and the new piston. It really is as simple as that. Um, does not take much to do. Let's put this back in the car now and just tighten it back up the same way we took it out. Don't forget the new crush washer over here that is definitely necessary to maintain an oil seal. Um, if you want, you can clean this up a little bit more, which I probably will right now because it's out of the car. Um, but yeah, we need that right now and we should be all set. And of course, it's almost always a good idea to put a thin coat of oil on all new parts just to make sure things are nice lubricated before the car starts. Anyways, um, with this nice ready to go, let's put this back where it belongs. And just like that, it's back in place, all torqued to spec as well. I'll put the torque specs right here and also put them in the description just to make sure you guys see it. 
Gonna shut the car now and we should be ready to go. Ignoring my terrible catalytic converter rattle, the car started up just fine. In fact, I noticed a smoother startup and overall a much smoother idle, which I was not expecting. Uh, but it just goes to show how a simple mechanical timing chain tensioner can actually create quite a big difference. Well, first off, I should mention that the E39 is from BMW's golden age of vehicles. You can tell from the V8, the E46 M3, the E38 uh, 7 Series, the first gen E63 X5, and of course the wonderful E39 5 Series, which include the M5 and of course the inline 6 models with the 525, 528, and 530 like this.